Rhode Island professor blames all COVID deaths that haven't even happened yet on Republicans. Michigan State professor says that black geologists can't hold hammers without being seen as a threat. And in our top story of the week, Cairn University says no to woke school accreditation policies. Plus, in our woke tweet of the week, we'll discuss a professor who insisted that being incarcerated in the U.S. is like being shipped off to Soviet and Nazi prisons. There's a few problems with that. We'll get into it. I'm Addison Smith, and this is The Campus Countdown. Our number three story of the week comes out of the University of Rhode Island, where one professor, Eric Loomis, has decided that Republicans will bear blame for every single future COVID death by default. He tweeted, quote, the thousands of upcoming COVID deaths are entirely the fault of the Republican Party every single one. Though it is worth noting, people do have agency if they were bamboozled by the Republican Party. They also wanted to be. In 2012, Loomis called for the death of the National Rifle Association Executive VP Wayne LaPierre following the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. I was heartbroken in the first 20 mass murders. Now I want Wayne Pierre's head on a stick. Loomis also said that he, quote, saw nothing wrong with an Antifa supporter killing a Trump supporter in Portland from a, quote, moral perspective. In January, Canvas Reform reported that Loomis called science, statistics, and technology racist. Quote, this is why I have so much contempt for those, including many liberals, who just want the data. The data is racist, he said on social media. Of course he said that. So every COVID death is in the hands of Republicans. He never says why. He just wants to blame Republicans, of course. I don't know what his reason is for suggesting this, but it probably has something to do with his stereotyping of Republicans as anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers. In our number two story of the week, professors have banded together to speak out about probably the most pressing issue plaguing our society today. Black geologists holding hammers. This is a stereotype that I hear myself at least thrice a day, so it's good to finally see people waking up to this very all-too-common racial stereotyping. Campus Reform has the report. Geoscientist and Michigan State University professor Julie Leibarkin received the American Geophysical Union presidential citation for helping to create the Call for Robust Anti-Racism Plan for the Geosciences petition. Labarkin and her team created an important dialogue and a framework for being anti-racist in geosciences that is being used by organizations around the world to make our community more diverse and inclusive, the citation reads. The petition calls out fellow geoscience organizations in their statements amid racial unrest for not specifically referencing anti-black racism and the American Association of Petroleum Geologists for being uncomfortably silent. The Change.org petition has amassed over 26,000 signatures. Several demands are listed, including the acknowledgement of inequities in fieldwork. For example, black geoscientists are not safe to engage in fieldwork everywhere that white and other privileged geoscientists are able to. Whereas a white geologist with a rock hammer will be seen as safe, a black black geologist may be seen as a threat, reads the petition. Holding suspicious objects have been used as a defense to call the police. LeBarkin recently shared her anti-racist journey with the school news outlet. She said, As a privileged white woman, sexism I experienced in my career is dramatically overshadowed by racism experienced by my black, indigenous, and or people of color BIPOC colleagues. So basically, black geologists are not safe because when they use their tools to do their job, apparently everyone thinks that they're a threat. A black man simply going to work and doing his job is apparently dangerous to his safety because apparently it scares everyone. Holding suspicious objects have been used as as a defense to call the police? Well, sure, but that's not a black-specific thing. And I would suggest, actually, that assuming it is, is really what's racist in all of this. It's almost cliche by now to point this out for the left, but for them... Everything is racist. Everything. And this is just another example of that. This is just farther down the critical race theory rabbit hole. In our top story of the week, Cairn University has said no thank you to woke accreditation policies. A nice change of pace. Campus Reform has the report. 
Cairn, a non-denominational Christian university outside of Philadelphia, closed down its social work program in part because the council was, in the administration's view, pushing a set of critical theory and intersectionality assumptions and values inconsistent with our biblical view of humanity, human nature, and the world, the AP reported. The Council on Social Work Education issued a letter in May claiming that Cairn University president was exaggerating his concerns about the new education policy and accreditation standards. Quote, Williams' letter stated that the previous guidelines have permitted institutions to interpret the guidelines in a way that aligns with their university and mission and implied that the 2022 standards remove this permission for interpretation, reads the group's letter. This is a false statement, and it is worth mentioning here that CSWE is aware of the efforts in some states to limit the ways that institutions educate students about racism, diversity, and equity. Programs have never had the flexibility to interpret standards to align with university mission, the letter continued. In the current draft 2022 EPAS, programs are no longer required to articulate how the university and program mission align. That said, such alignment is also not prohibited. In addition, programs may add competencies to their program beyond EPA's requirements, and some programs at religiously affiliated institutions add an additional competency related to spirituality. Cairn's mission statement reads, Cairn University ex exists to educate students to serve Christ in the church, society, and the world as biblically minded, well-educated, and professionally competent men and women of character. The draft standards do contain lengthy segments about gender identity as well as anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We see it right here. Social workers understand how racism and oppression characterize and shape the human experience and are critical to the development of identity, behaviors, and practice at the individual, family, group, organizational, community, research, and policy levels. Additionally, Social workers understand the pervasive impact of white supremacy superiority and utilize the knowledge, awareness, and skills necessary to engage in anti-racist practice. The dimensions of diversity are understood as the intersectionality of multiple factors, including but not limited to deep breath. Age, caste, class, color, culture, disability, and ability, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, and expression, generational status, immigration status, legal status, marital status, political ideology, race, nationality, religion, spirituality, sex, sexual orientation, and tribal sovereign status. <laughs> okay. So this is great stuff from Karen. The accreditation standards are obviously full of leftist gunk. So it's nice to see a Christian school not cave into an ideology that obviously contradicts biblical standards and biblical teachings. Let's get to our woke tweet of the week. Our woke tweet of the week comes from Professor Jason Steinle of Yale University, who is so brave, so stunning and brave. They actually deleted the tweet, but not before we could get our hands on it. He wrote that, quote, the United States has one of the most brutal prison societies in human history. A small handful of ethnic groups in human history have faced such extraordinary rates of incarceration, but few for so many decades. Why perpetuate this cycle? Is this how the U.S. wants history to remember it, as one of the most brutal prison societies in human history? A little bit of background. Stanley is co-teaching a course at Yale titled Mass Incarceration in the Soviet Union in the United States next semester with another Yale history professor, another Yale professor, Timothy Snyder. According to the course description, the seminar is, quote, an investigation of the experience and purposes of mass incarceration in the Soviet Union and the United States in the 20th century, and will have intensive reading, which includes first-person accounts of the gulag in American prison, as well as scholarly monographs on the cause of mass incarceration in different contexts. So the American prison system, where the Federal Bureau of Prison mandates that inmates get three square meals a day. The American prison system, where inmates have gyms to lift weights in, basketball courts to play on, and areas outside to go out and get some fresh air, those guys have it way worse than the people in the gulags who were worked to death in brutal labor camps. They have it way worse than the 18 million people shipped off to slave camps in the Soviet Union, many of whom never lived to tell, tell the tale. American prisoners who have a chance at parole can, appear the, uh, can appeal their cases and be represented in court, have it way worse than the Soviet prisoners. Sure, whatever you, whatever you say, Jason. 
That will conclude this week's episode of the Campus Countdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps. If you're not following us on our social medias, make sure you're doing that now at Campus Reform, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.